Hi, and welcome back to my videos for General Chemistry 2. Today we'll learn a bit more about the energy we can get from a voltaic cell or a battery. It might seem like that's exactly what we've already been doing, but actually we've been looking at the voltage, and voltage and energy aren't the same thing, though they do have some things in common. This is a useful topic, because redox reactions, like the ones that occur in voltaic cells, are among the most energetic reactions in all of chemistry, so it's helpful to know exactly how much energy we can get out of them. You might remember that back in videos 29 and 30, we talked about the Gibbs free energy, which tells us whether or not a reaction is spontaneous. If delta G is negative, the reaction is spontaneous, and if it's positive, the reaction is not spontaneous. Since redox reactions are so exothermic, we might expect the Gibbs free energy to be quite large and negative, and it turns out we can determine delta G using this equation. As we've seen in previous videos, delta G zero is the standard Gibbs free energy. That's the Gibbs free energy at standard temperature and pressure. Delta E is the voltage produced by the voltaic cell. The other two variables in the equation are new for us. N is the number of electrons that are transferred from the anode to the cathode in the balanced redox reaction, and F is a new constant for us called the Faraday constant, and it always has the value 96,495 joules over volts times moles. Notice that this equation has a negative number on the right side. Since delta G is negative when a reaction is spontaneous, this tells us that the larger the voltage is, the more spontaneous the reaction will be. Let's try an example. Suppose we want to know the Gibbs free energy of the voltaic cell, where copper and silver are the electrodes. We've studied this voltaic cell before, especially in videos 33 and 34, and when we looked at it, we found out that it produces a voltage of 0.462 volts. We plug that into our equation, along with the Faraday constant. To get N, we have to look at the half reactions for this voltaic cell. Back in those earlier videos, we saw that the half reactions are these. N is the number of electrons transferred in the overall reaction, and the half reactions show us that two electrons were transferred, so N is two. Now we just solve the equation we get a delta G of negative 89,200 joules per mole, which is negative 89.2 kilojoules per mole. That's a really large negative value for delta G, so that tells us that this is a very spontaneous reaction. That's exactly what we'd expect for a voltaic cell, because we know from experience that electricity flows through them spontaneously. Since this is such a strongly spontaneous reaction, we might expect that the equilibrium constant for the reaction would heavily favor the products. Back in video 30, we saw this equation, which tells us how the equilibrium constant is related to the Gibbs free energy. We can use this to determine the equilibrium constant of the reaction we've been studying. For delta G, we plug in the value that we calculated a minute ago. R is 8.314 joules per kelvins times moles. For the temperature, let's imagine that we're performing this reaction at room temperature, which is 25.0 Celsius. That's 298.15 Kelvin. We divide the Gibbs free energy by negative R times T, which gives us 36.0. When we solve for K, we find out that the equilibrium constant is 4.25 times 10 to the 15th power. That's a huge equilibrium constant, which tells us that the reaction heavily favors the products. That's exactly what we'd expect for a redox reaction. One thing you might have noticed about this equation is that the symbol we used for the voltage is delta E zero. Remember, the little zero means that we're at standard temperature. It also means that the concentrations of the solutions in our voltaic cell are at standard concentration, which is one molar. But what if our voltaic cell uses some other temperature or concentration? In that case, we won't be able to use this equation after all. 
If we can predict the voltage of a voltaic cell at any temperature or, co or concentration, we'll have a very useful tool, because we rarely do have exactly the right temperature or concentration in order to have standard conditions. The person who figured out how to predict the voltage of all voltaic cells was the German chemist Walter Nernst. Nernst was an important figure in the early days of finding practical uses for electricity, and his work helped the development of the first batteries. He was also a decent pianist, and he invented the very first electric piano. He used to play it and accompany his friend Albert Einstein, who played violin. Anyway, Nernst developed this equation to describe how the voltage is affected by changes in the temperature and concentration. This is called the Nernst equation in his honor, and it's especially useful because we can use it with any voltaic cell, no matter what the temperature or concentration of the voltaic cell is. In this equation, delta E0 is the voltage under standard conditions, which we calculate using this equation and data from Appendix E. We learned to do that in video 34. If you've forgotten how to do this, you might want to review that video. You already know that R is the gas law constant, which is 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. T is the temperature, N is the number of electrons, and F is the Faraday constant. You might recall from several earlier videos that Q is called the reaction quotient, and it's the ratio of the concentrations of the products over the reactants, each raised to an exponent that's the coefficient for the balanced reaction. For example, suppose we look at our voltaic cell with copper and silver again, but this time the temperature is 40.0 degrees Celsius, and the concentrations are 0 0.100 molar for the copper nitrate and 0 0.0100 molar for the silver nitrate. What will be the voltage produced by the voltaic cell? These aren't standard conditions, so we'll use the Nernst equation for this one. We already figured out delta E0. As we saw a few minutes ago, it's 0 0.462 volts. T is the temperature which is now 40.0 Celsius, or 313.15 Kelvin. And as we can see from the half reactions, N is 2. For Q, we need to be a little careful. Remember, Q is products over reactants. From our balanced overall reaction, we can see that Q will be this. As usual, we leave out the solids, so the copper and silver metals get dropped. Now, we just plug in our concentrations. Don't forget that the silver concentration gets squared. This gives us a value of Q of 1000. Now we just run through this calculation, which gives us 0 0.01349 volts for this large fraction in the middle. Finally, we get an overall result of 0 0.369 volts. Notice that this is significantly different from the result we were getting when we used standard temperature and concentration, which was 0.462 volts. So the Nernst equation is giving us much more accurate results. Let's try one more example. Suppose we have this voltaic cell. We have an iron electrode and a zinc electrode, and the two solutions contain iron 3 ions and zinc 2 ions. The temperature is 10.0 degrees Celsius, and the concentrations are 0 0.150 molar for the iron and 0 0.200 molar for the zinc. What will be the voltage for this voltaic cell? To find out, we'll use the Nernst equation. The first thing we'll need is delta E0, so we'll need to use this equation. We use appendix E to look up the standard reduction potentials of the two half reactions. The reduction reaction with iron has a reduction potential of negative 0 0.040 volts, and the reduction reaction with zinc has a potential of negative 0 0.763 volts. As we mentioned in video 34, the half reaction with the higher potential is the reduction, and the other one is the oxidation reaction. That means we must reverse the zinc half reaction to make it an oxidation and also change the sign on the voltage. That means that the overall voltage is 0.723 volts, 
So the value of delta E zero is 0 0.723 volts. In order to write the overall reaction, we need the electrons to cancel out. So we'll multiply the zinc reaction by three and the iron reaction by two. That gives us six electrons on each side of the reaction, and those will cancel out. Next, we go back to the Nernst equation and plug in the value of R and the temperature, which is 283.15 Kelvin. N is the number of electrons that get transferred, and we just saw that this is six electrons. To get Q, we need to use this equation, in which we have the concentration of the product ions over the reactant ions, each raised to the coefficient from the balanced reaction. The zinc ion is on the product side of the reaction, so 0 0.200 goes in the numerator, and the iron concentration goes in the denominator. That gives us a value of Q of 0 0.356. We'll plug that into the Nernst equation, and now we're ready to solve it. The large fraction in the middle is equal to 0 0.004066 volts. Now we can solve the equation, which gives us an overall voltage of 0 0.727 volts. So the Nernst equation can give us very accurate predictions of the voltage of a voltaic cell or a battery. We'll use the Nernst equation some more in the next video, and we'll also wrap up our discussion of electrical cells and batteries. I hope you'll join me for that. But until then, have a good week.